seconds. Okay, coaches, thank you for joining us today on Virtual Coaches Clinic. We have, for this session, Coach Costas. Uh, he's overseas, and if you don't follow him on Twitter, he's a great follow, great social media, great sharer of the game. And his topic today for us is advanced pick and roll offense and defense. Coach is going to roll through his presentations and then take have a Q&A session at the end. So... Hold your questions till the end and put them in the Q&A, and then we'll moderate those at the end. Coach, whenever you're ready. Oh, thank you, Coach. And I want to thank the Virtual Coaches Clinic for inviting me this season too for a presentation. And uh, the, organiz the organization and uh, the whole process is really cool this year also because every day we can see many, many clinics on various topics covering almost every aspect of basketball. And I'm really glad that the international element is really strong this season too. Uh, I really like the, the mixture of uh, the American and the national you know, uh, knowledge basis of coaches because with the internet and uh, the video and the platforms like Synergy and Instascout and you name it and Sport Code, you can see all over the world uh, how about uh, coaches uh, disrupt uh, the, the um, the, the opponent's offenses and how to design their own offenses and you can see the players, their skills and how they interact in, on the court. So it's really, really nice to be a part of this um, online series as well. Uh, my topic is advanced pick and roll, offense and defense. I wanted to go through a deeper, you know, a view of the most common action used in basketball last 15 seasons and uh, it's it's far more interesting to do that because uh, other than seeing that pick and roll okay they only play pick and roll side pick and roll top pick and roll and step up pick and roll it's an action that the two or three seasons it's more common because uh, before that uh, virtually no coach wanted to do a step up pick and roll to have a drive to the corner of the court because every other coach in defense would trap that but now it's you know a trend the last two or three seasons so my presentation will be about uh, some advanced actions against some uh, differences that we see in common uh, independently if it's in the Euroleague the European competition the national competition or the NBA or the NCAA uh, so without further ado I'll go to share my screen and and get ready for some intro Okay, the eight uh, coverage types in pick and roll we can see in a league, in, a, in every aspect of a team game, it's a drop or over and flat. That's the most common uh, we're seeing last three or four seasons. Uh, most coaches prefer drop because they want to isolate the pick and roll defense and offense to two versus two, the ball handler and the big man. And they want to do that because they want to make uh, the ball circulation, the passing game out of the pick and roll uh, really difficult for the offense. They don't want to involve all the other players by uh, making rotations and uh, going X switch or X out. Uh, both terms are good. And they want to keep it two versus two. And uh, through analytics, of course, we all know that in any level of basketball, the less efficient shot is the pull-up jumper, especially with uh, the big guy containing you and having uh, his hands all over you and uh, contesting your shot. And then there's a push and under. Most coaches do that or an intro pick and roll, like you say in Euro ball screen offense. The first screen on the side, let's say, it's to initiate the action. So they don't use it to attack some teams. They use it to enter their action. So most coaches will say, okay, push your big man a bit higher, a step higher to go above the three-point line, like two or three steps, and then having the ball handler's guard go under both the screener and the defender, uh, so to contain the drive and not have any action at all. Some coaches use push and under, I guess a pick and roll um, that uh, involves a, a big, a big uh, guy as a, as a shooter, a stretch four or a stretch five, 
and the ball handler that is not really a shooter. So they, they do push an under in order to contain the drive and don't uh, have the other big guy uh, popping out all by himself and taking a three-point shot. And the third coverage is through, let's say going through the defender and the screener. Uh, common action with uh, against uh, a non-shooter, a non-shooter and preferably not a good penetrator too, let's say a slow non-shooter ball handler who is only looking to pass the ball. So if you go through, you don't have to help from the weak side or the strong side. You have only to just sprint and meet him on the other end and uh, of course your defensive big will go under you. And then high flat or flat heads, a really common uh, coverage type uh, in Europe, last five or six seasons, because you deny any penetration of the of the ball handler, and you have your big guy uh, stretched uh, with his arms stretched high and going wide, uh, wide uh, side steps to deny the penetration, and then you have your weak side. That's a coach decision where he should help from the two man side or the single tag side. Okay, that's a coach choice, and you have uh, this. Uh, this uh, defense contains the pick and roll and lets the ball, you know, pass a lot ahead or back on the perimeter. So you do that in order to avoid any pass to the big guy rolling in, and uh, don't let the, the offense have an immediate score. They have to pass and make an extra pass or a skip pass to find a close out attack or a three point shot, usually contested. Then the heads out, a more aggressive, you know, dis uh, disrupt the coverage, or hard heads, a vertical heads with one or two steps of the uh, defensive big in order to surprise uh, the ball hunter and make him uh, do a retreat dribble or two and then let weak side defense or strong side defense, whenever, whichever uh, you, the coach choose, to contain the dive and to uh, be ready for rotation. And there's a trap. Trapping is against a really good ball hunter, a scorer. To, especially in Europe, they do that, many coaches do that, in the lower level, in the higher level, it doesn't matter, against really good ball handlers that they're really ready to attack and shoot. They're really good at both ends, uh, both uh, skills, and shoot of the dribble and penetrate of the dribble. So they do that in the early stages of the game in order to don't let them uh, attack and uh, make them pass the ball. Don't let them get into the game, as we say. Of course, many coaches do that after a timeout, as a surprise, or in the end of the game um, to surprise uh, the, the opponent and uh, you know earn a possession or uh, better disrupt any offensive uh, you know action of the of the offense. Some coaches do that against a, a mediocre ball handler, let's say a secondary ball handler or a wing, in order to steal a ball or force him to do a turnover to make a bad pass and then go fast pass break or make him uh, travel. And then there's a switch. Switch, most uh, teams uh, have a rule. Under 10 seconds, or under 8 seconds, uh, globally, they switch because they don't want to uh, let the other team pass the ball around and they go to one versus one. Some coaches do that all over, uh, all over, um, you know, the shot clock. Like uh, we have a big guy that is really, really mobile and preferably a pie forward and uh, he's really athletic and we can switch that uh, pick and roll all, all the time. So, so as a rule, a coach, if he has a, you know, the roster with the, the preferably athletic skills, he can do that. There's a trend in Europe the last two or three seasons to have athletic bigs and switch uh, pick and rolls at the end of a quarter or even at the start of it to, as a surprise to the other uh, team in order to let not let them uh, circulate the ball and go to their passing game and go to skip passes and drive and kick and don't let them you know get into the game and involve all five players and there's, there's the ice or side as we call it in Europe I recently uh, read an article about this uh, type of coverage that said down like say the force the, the offensive player the Bohader go down the lane down for, for the baseline this of course is the only way to cancel the pinky roll um, and of course the big guy has to communicate first, it's call side, 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 or eyes, 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 or whatever the call is, and uh, the defensive player should, you know, switch uh, his uh, feet posi uh, pos position and force the ball handler to through the baseline. So this is the, the eight pick-up types we see 
in every level of basketball and every one of them has weaknesses and strong points and depending on the roster and how do you do you work on that uh, okay before going to some uh, clips I want to, I want to show you about the advanced uh, actions you could uh, use in your team to attack all of these coverages I would like to say that in defense the most important factor for me as a coach in my experience by coaching games as a head coach or assistant coach and my experience in clinics and uh, practices of other coaches and the, the, the vast uh, <laughs> the vast majority of games I have watched on tape and live and cutting video, editing video is, is one thing high energy and hustle high energy and hustle in defense covers almost every tactic every coverage you can imagine if you have high energy and hustle you can uh, you can have one or two simple rules in defending the pick and roll and then just applying them in games with high energy and hustle and of course very good communication because communication is the basis is the a of energy let's say in defense you have you'll have a really good defensive team i have seen teams with experienced players that played in every game a different type of coverage. Let's say a non-shooter will go and go push an under. Then a really good shooter will go and play hard hits. And then with uh, the, the power forward that is a stretch forward, we're going to play through or switch. It's not that easy to have every every for every defensive uh, for every offensive player, excuse me, a different coverage type. You need high IQ players to really concentrate it on the game plan. And of course, we're going to make mistakes. Even the best in the NBA and the EuroLeague, they make mistakes because they're human. And the coaches do mistakes, of course, and they try to correct them with their players because we're a team. So, hustle and high energy is most important than any tactic and action you're going to imagine. Then, it goes with the game plan and what you're going to do. Most coaches I have uh, talked about, they have one or two coverage types they trust as a rule to their team principles and then for some special players let's say a really good ball handler but he's, uh, he's a, has a weak left hand maybe with this player we're gonna play ice on the right side of the floor to force him on his butt uh, with a weak hand so that's for a special occasion some coaches do that for a, for a play there's a, let's say classic classic play classic action ivers on screen screens you know, in the high post area, and then a side pick and roll with the corner empty. We're going to keep that side, so we play ice, so they don't have any, you know, offensive action, offensive action. Uh, okay, enough with the intro. I'm going to go now with uh, the video uh, I have prepared. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. versus drop or over and flat. There's many types of flat. Some coaches have their big guy here on the free throw line to contain the penetration. Some coaches say you, have, you should be on the near the three point line and then retreat in order to make the ball handler think about penetrating. And then retreat and some coaches say uh, to the big guy get be below the free throw line because this guy is not a good pull-up shooter and I'm gonna give them that let's make him take five or six or seven pull-up shots and, and okay we're okay if he's make if he makes up to two two out of seven we're okay no problem and many coaches do that last five or six seasons because for analytics as I said earlier this is probably the less efficient shot in basketball so we're gonna see the first clip against drop defense you can see here that screener changes his angle in order to get a better screening angle. You can see here that, of course, uh, the defense has the defensive big has the instruction of his coach to be on the free throw line in drop or over and flat. You can see that the, the offensive big is, is is making a short roll. You can see here that the other big guy, instead of the trend the last 10 to 12 years for out to in because he's a non-shooter, he's making, you know, uh, a cut behind the defense. Uh, many say that a dunker cut, because here is the dunker area. So here we have the big guy recovering, 
the 400 pass of the ball to the short roll, okay, just below the free throw line, and we have two one weak side defender here, and the guy that he's a defensive player covering this guy, the other big guy, power forward, he's lost, he hasn't seen him, so this is a really nice and easy action out of a middle pick and roll to attack and drop defend, uh, drop this uh, coverage, to have the other guy that's cutting behind the defense. If you do that, of course, and his defender is aware and follows him, you have to kick out the ball and then let the close out attack begin to go driving kick, etc. Second action against drop. Uh, see now, it's a side pick and roll, and then you can see here Donovan Mitchell getting to the other side with a spin dribble. You can see here there's a middle pick and roll. You can see here Nurkic is right on the free throw line as before with a different opponent this time. But you can see that the players have this rule, decision from their coach to be in drop position and the flat uh, position of the big guy. It's here on the free throw line. This is this is really clear as a rule. You can see here that the screener is cutting to the rim, is sprinting, and this is the the named hostage dribble, that the ball handler stops, he lowers his knees, and he has a wider base and gets his defender behind him, take him as hostage. Okay, so this creates a two versus one situation: the ball handler and the big guy versus the big guy alone, because here this guy is not involved. This guy is not involved, and this guy is sure not involved because you can see that all three defenders are in a perfect position, either on the strong side or on the weak side. But it's a two versus one situation created here just by having the hostage dribble. You can see that this guy here, he's forced to commit inside the paint because he has seen that his teammate Nurkic is uh, above. Uh, the screener's level, so with a low, it will be easy dunk. So he's gonna cover the rim. He's in really good weak side position. So a skip pass is necessary here for a catch and shoot situation, but he's recovered. He's ready to take away the shot. This is Bogdanovic, a really great uh, catch and go shooter. Catch and shoot guy, sorry. He's gonna go to the closeout attack. Of course, this will start the domino. The domino effect, as we say, basketball, because if you attack the closeout and you manage to penetrate either from the middle or from the baseline, you're gonna force the big guy helping here. So if he helps, the big guy is gonna shift and with a really nice pass, I'm gonna find his basket. This is really high level basketball. You can see that in lower leagues too, but the execution and quickness we saw, I'm gonna let the whole clip you know, go in regular speed without pausing. As you can see, the execution, the angles and the quickness, they executed this really nice action against drop defense, the hostage dribble. The big guy sprinting to the rim, he's forcing weak side help. The skip pass. The closer attack from the baseline, the help from the big guy, necessary help to avoid the layup, and then the shift with a bounce pass. It's really, really difficult for the other guy in the weak side, this guy here, to cover this, this pass. Because if he's going to do that, the, pen, the guy that penetrated here, Bogdanovic, is going to make a kick out pass to the other corner for the three. So it's really difficult to do that as a defense. It's not easy to do. Now, uh, many coaches uh, are loading the nail, as they say in the United States. They put the, the next defender, instead of having one foot in the paint, be in the free throw area, and one foot outside of the paint, they're putting it on the middle of the floor, clogging the lane, that's the term they use in the States, clogging, and uh, disturbing every penetration. I'm going to see a simple action, but for me it's really advanced, because simple, is the most difficult thing to do in basketball because many players want to do, uh, you know, the, the fancy pass or the ski pass, but they have the simple pass, one pass away. So it's really good for me to see that action in NBA. So you can see here, that's what I'm saying. This player normally should be right here, one or two steps 
away from the ball. Uh, the defensive uh, guy here is really in draw position, as you can see, but he's covered by the next defender. Okay. You can see that with a pass ahead, there's a really big gap because this is the Miami Heat, the really good uh, spacing team. You have seen one shooter, two shooters, Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, and here Jimmy Butler, a really good uh, offensive player. And uh, with the screener diving, he's gonna commit. With the pass ahead, this is a really big gap for the defensive guard that he's uh, okay, he's loaded the nail, okay, to cover. So with a catch and go. You can see that the penetration here is really avoidable, unavoidable. So he's really, he's really going for the basket. I'm gonna leave that in a normal speed so you can see how quick they did that. It's, it's, it seems really simple, but it's not. You have to be proper spaced, you have to be ready to attack. Because many teams all over the world do that. They clog the nail, they're ready to help, they're faking a bug or help a recover whatever you're gonna call it, the terms are the, meaning the same thing. Okay, so with a simple quick pass and a, cut, and a penetration on, on the cuts, you can see that it's really, really a nice action, a simple action. Okay. Versus ice defense. Many teams do that against some scorers or they don't wanna force them to the right hand or the left hand. You can see here the clip He's playing ice or side. The big guy has changed his angle. Um, in the past, mainly in Europe, uh, because in Europe, in the past, we have some really big guys. Uh, now they call them dinosaurs. I really like, really like a big guy with some low post skills, who has some really good screens. But uh, as the basketball evolves, uh, many coaches uh, uh, you know, consider them to be a thing of the past. I think not. I think that. You can use a really big guy with a uh, back to the basket game that sets a good screens if you can manage to, to find some actions for him. So, a big guy with that skills and that uh, level of uh, screening ability should be with his back on the defender. We call that bat screen. But this is a chest screen. His screen. He has switched his screen angle, so he's giving a penetration uh, lane to his teammate. And we can see that he's gonna make the so-called snake dribble. He's gonna change directions and attack the big guy. And he's diving to the gap. You can see here that the defensive team, the Warriors, have a really, really nice uh, weak side and strong side position. They're packing the paint. Okay, he's ready to take away any kick out pass to the shooter. He's ready, he's lowered. Any pass here should be a really good closeout. Any skip pass to the corner, he's ready to deflect it or make the close, right close out. But he's they're already packed in in order to avoid any alley oops or bounce passes for a dunk. So here he's forced to tag the roller because if there's a pass here, it's a dunk or an easy layup. Paul Hunter sees that and he sees that in the corner his teammate is all is left all alone, and this is an open shot. Okay. I'm going to run this in normal speed now. And I would say what I should normally do as a coach in this situation, who has the responsibility to rotate to this corner. It's easy to recognize that I understand for many coaches. You can see that in the mid there, the ball handle has taken that decision to throw a really good skip pass. Of course, here, this guy here, the Paul Hunter's defender, had to sprint to the corner because he's the only guy that's not defending anyone. He should have sprint the moment he was in mid there. Okay. You have an open shot. The snake dribble is really, really useful to use under drop or ice uh, coverages. And then uh, by attacking the big guy, you really have the opportunity to make the proper pass. If the weak side tags the, the roller, have a skip pass to the corner and then you force defense to rotate by sprinting. If they do that, you have an open shot. Versus heads defense, a more aggressive type of coverage. So here I'll go Bersen in the scene for Mitchell. 
Rook is now is gonna heads out, not playing drop. First thing you wanna do as a coach is to instruct and teach your players to hit the short roll. Because if you do that with a really quick bounce pass or with a small low pass, you have your big guy here around the free throw line on the elbow or in the middle of the floor and you have a 4 versus 3 situation every time because two guys are committed on the ball handler now here we have the situation I mentioned is 3 versus 2 because Gobert is looking this way he can't pass that way, no one could, could do that maybe Magic Johnson or Steve Nash <laughs> or Jason Kidd in the past but we have a 3 versus 2 situation in the, in the side that Gobert uh, uh, is looking so we have a guy in the corner, a guy in the wing and we have the last guy here, he's guarding the corner guard and the other guy here inside the paint Gobert is tagged and contested another big guy should put the ball on the floor maybe and make one hard dribble and go all the way and dunk the ball or make a layup or get an end one Gobert prefers here to be more <clears throat> of a team player and skip the pass to the wing that of course forces Lillard to rotate back to his player and McCollum to rotate to recover, sorry, back to his player but with the two quick passes this is really really impossible okay J.J. McCollum did a really good job trying to contest in this shot for Bogdanovic of course you know in the higher level this shot is 90% uh, free it's not contested as it seems you know he's jumping to 2 meters 10 to 15 feet away so Bogdanovic is a really good scorer, really good shooter gonna make that shot again I'm gonna let that run in normal speed again one time to see about the, the short roll is the best solution is the, is the most imminent solution uh, against this type of coverage because we have always an advantage of a plus one player and of course we have to have a big guy who I can recognize if he's have to attack or make a skip pass Gobert here could easily because he's really you know for seven seven feet uh, one inch tall if i remember correctly or seven two he could easily make a ski pass over the head here and then Lillard should run and then he should pass extra pass here for an open shot McCollum wouldn't you know uh, wouldn't make it here either he, he would jump off as he did there so that's the most imminent solution that you should do at the heads out versus trap a more aggressive approach now we go to Euroleague Fenerbahce against Real Madrid one of the two of the top teams in the European basketball we're gonna see here there is, is a trap on the ball handler okay the big guy Jan Vesel in the Czech big is uh, is cutting to the, to the rim they anticipated that and that's that Tommy the Italian he's making himself available for a pass a release pass to get the ball away from the trap I see the ball handler making a really nice pivot to get away from the aggressive trap that defense tried to uh, force him to make a turnover and then after the release pass because there are two defensive players on one uh, you know uh, offensive player there are four versus three so this guy should read which is the best pass to do now we have you know here some you know uh, conditions in every aspect of uh, the pick and roll game and the trapping and the hedging and the advantage here number 35 the American he's a really good scorer his player should be you know one step nearer to the basket some coaches maybe put them uh, as a structure that if the ball is trapped here and make the release pass you should be like him like, like Randall the American guy you should be here one leg, one foot inside the paint, one set outside the paint, and if the pose is passed, you know, to the next guy here, then strong side, you're gonna close out. But he's committed to his player right now, so he's leaving the paint empty. I say highlight them here. So the Tome reads that, so he makes the best pass available to Vesely, who has rolled to the basket. This makes the situation three versus two. The defender here is still committed to his player. He's not playing you know a really good team defense right now in this clip he should be inside because he has to face two defensive players in the weak side he doesn't even see this guy cutting in front of him he's making the front cut he's committed to him 
So 4 versus 3, 3 versus 2, and it all goes down to 2 versus 1 for the dunk. I'm going to let that roll for another time in all my speed to see how quickly they pass the ball out of a really difficult situation because trapping the ball near the sideline it's really a stressful situation for any ball handler. Near the sideline to be trapped aggressively like that with their arms stretched it's not easy. The whole key is a safety pass. Okay, That's the whole key of dismantling this kind of offense, of defense, excuse me. And of course, reading, a click away before passing, okay, it's really important in these situations to find the proper advantage. Versus switching, NBA again, okay, I'm gonna let this roll, they're making the switch on the pick and roll, the big guy on the guard, the big man cuts inside, and then we have the field behind. This is not really uh, that common in the States. In international basketball, it's a rule, if there's a drive, a triple threat drive or drive on penetration or transition or a pick and roll drive like that the guy in the back uh, as a rule always feels behind the pass back is open because as you can see they are packed in correctly and the big guy is sealing the guard and they made a triangle the triangle is the best way to have a mismatch uh, exploited inside the basket. You have to make a triangle, either with a pass back, like the one we see here, and with a pass ahead. You can see here that defender is committed to the three-point shooter, that's Zach Lavin, boots a great scorer. So he's committed to him, he's not making any uh, effort to help on the seal. Those is an overhead pass, you can see that defensive player here does, doesn't uh, do any effort, doesn't make any effort to contest the pass or to make it harder for him. So we have one on one, no trap, easy thing to do. Another, another switch, and this is an action I really like. The Utah Jazz did it really good this season. I, I started noticing that uh, last season in other teams. They know they're gonna switch, so they do a slide. Slide is called an action that you're setting a fake screen and you're popping out instantly. Okay, in, in virtually you are just running, you know and you uh, try to mix up the defense, like that, like Ingles did. And they flare the switch. It's really nice for action for a great shooter, like Joe Ingles, the Australian. Quick action to find an open shot. Okay, slide and flare. You can see that making that in a, in a really nice game speed, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow defense to react. They know they're going to switch because the guard to guard, he's small forward with a point guard, but they flare the switch. And notice that when he catches the ball, he's really, really open. Okay, to take that shot with that quick, uh, quick slide and flare action. And uh, so I'm going to show some defensive schemes I have found really interesting uh, this season. All clips are from this season, the current season, 2021, from Euroleague in the NBA. Uh, first action is uh, that here. Uh, it's drop, X out, and jump switch from the Southern Hornets. A really interesting team in defense because they play like an NCAA team. A uh, lot of young guys, they play zone press. You don't see zone press in the NBA. <laughs> you rarely see that. They trap the ball, the jump switch, they do really good stuff defensively. So, here in the first clip of the defense, you can see that he's dropping. He's going to make the right pass, the skip pass. They're going to X-switch or X-out, same thing. So they're covering the skip pass three. They're covering the extra pass three. And I don't know if there's a rule to force him middle. I don't know that. Okay. But he's having the middle lane open for a drive on his left hand. And then you can see they're going to jump switch with the next player. So they turned the pick and roll game to one, one versus one game and they are really packed in and ready to defend any action and they do that a contested free I'm gonna roll that roll in the game speed again one time because it's a really nice scheme to have 
a nice defensive cover as to have out of the drop after the X out because this is a classic reaction drop we're gonna X out and then on the penetration jump switch it's guard to guard okay they stopped the extra pass they stopped penetration and they turned that to one version of game and they're really in really great weak side positions and they got the last three two Okay, trap the pick and roll and zone up. First time I heard the term zone up was back in 2003, 18 years ago. It was uh, one of the first clinics I have attended in Salonica in Greece and uh, legendary NBA coach George Carl, Supersonics, Denver Nuggets, Milwaukee Bucks, Team USA and Real Madrid in the past has talked about the pick and roll game and how it's going to take the game by storm in 2003 and uh, he talked about offense and he talked about defense in this in that clinic in Salonika he was really analytic and really detailed really nice clinic and he talked about zoning up when he heads out he said and trapping on the pick and roll the ball handler behind we are zoning up meaning that we have fewer players so we have to zone up and we make a triangle and you see that here 18 years ago that is still standing as a tactic. Okay, this is a play from the Chicago Bulls Tiger to get Zach Lavin a look. You, you can see that he's playing top lock defense, deny. They go to a double handoff, the power forward, they switch that, and then they go into the main action of the play, the middle pick and roll, top high, high pick and roll with Lavin. You know, they trap him. He's gonna make the short roll, but what's the defense? What's the three defensive players, what are they doing? The higher player is going to tag the roller and have zoned up. They can make a triangle back. Of course, this guy here is in the best position because he's closer to his player and he's not, it's a step on the right. So, this pass here is easier either to deflect it or to make a good close out and stop penetration. This is, of course, the, the easiest pass to do. It's the closer pass, the quicker pass to do and have them rotate and run to the close out. So this guy here is going to read the situation, 4 versus 3. Going to make the right pass. He's going to rotate, he's going to X out. And he's going to recover. That's really, really nice defense from the Kings. But what I said before I saw any video, the hustle and the high energy is the most important element on defense. If he's not ready to contest the pass, to make a deflection, and let that pass fly to the corner. This guy here, he's, he's really difficult. It's really difficult for him to uh, make it and contest this corner three. And Thrun Alix will know that last seasons, every coach says corner three because it's the most efficient shot in basketball, especially in high levels. So this hustle play here, apart from the tactic that is really nice trap, tag the roller and then triangle back and be ready to X out, is the hustle and deflection that made the whole difference by not letting the offense score in that play. If he's not in a hustle position and ready to deflect the ball, they're gonna end up with an open three point shot. Another, uh, another clip, I believe this is the last for today's presentation. Switch and trap an elite scorer. This is Mike James. He's now with uh, the Brooklyn Nets. He just signed for the middle of the season after making two 10 day contracts, really good scorer. He was uh, one of the best players in Europe playing last season. Tseseka uh, Moscow was the team he played for, Russian, and the Maccabi Tel Aviv, the Israeli team, is the team with yellow. They switched, okay, they switched, this is the power forward, not really little the guy, Be because they know that they're going to trap him and rotate from the weak side in order to get the ball out of the scorer hands. Because here it's 2 versus 1 on the weak side, James has faced this defense before in Europe, from Maccabi and from some other teams. So he has made the right pass here to the next player, Will Clyburn, another good American offensive player. They rotated. The center has to stretch out to contest the corner shot. He's contesting it. Okay, and behind they have really good weak side positions. So they got their plan. They got the ball away from the scorers 
hands and make the other players beat them in this particular situation. You can see here that the contest is nice, okay, and they miss the shot. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing for now. Uh, I'm pretty sure I uh, I showed some ideas that some of you have seen. Uh, some of you have maybe you haven't seen them, you know, uh, as often uh, as some people see. It, but uh, of course, there are numerous actions to to throw against and use against this eight type of coverage I mentioned in the intro and many other schemes you can imagine. And, but I have seen that really these clips are really interesting and study and focus many teams. And of course, uh, you can see that in any coverage, you can apply five or six different kind of actions to attack this coverage. And in some defensive schemes that you have in mind, you have seen in many games, you have applied them because in many cases, it's not the theory, it's the practice. You have to practice and see if it fits your roster. That's the main idea for me as a coach. I like that. On paper is right, on video is right, but you know, you should be really, really uh, careful with uh, what you wish it for because if you put in practice and after one, two, three practices, your team doesn't have the ability to do that, maybe he has the ability to do something different. Not better, not worse, but something different. And uh, it's really, really nice to see that in pick and roll, uh, after 20 years of really heavy usage in any level of basketball, we have advanced. We have seen many, many different types of coverages and many different types of attacking the coverages. Of course, there are numerous other ways. I just showed some clips and there's more, more to it, of course. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, Coach Hart, uh, I'm ready to go. I don't see any in here, Costas. Okay. There were before, I can uh, okay. No, there's not any questions for you at the moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were waiting till you were done because I told them they were gonna we were gonna wait till you ended. Okay, so no, pro see. no problem. Give them a couple seconds to see if yep. Here, okay. there. What do you think about the run and jump defense okay. in terms of? That's why I, I don't know if he's trying to determine that with pick and roll coverage or just in general. Maybe maybe and, he maybe he is. Coach, could you maybe elaborate in the Q and A? Let us know if it is this regarding pick and roll or just in general, run and jump defense. Uh, in regards to the pick and roll. Okay, okay. I believe uh, coach, coach is uh, is saying about the, the the one defense they call next defense. I believe that because the next player uh, tags the, the ball handler. And then, uh, of course, the big guy goes with the roller inside, and then they rotate from the strong side. I believe that's the type of defense he's referring to. Okay. And uh, if, it, if it's that the case, I have seen it run by some teams in Spain in the past, and uh, I have seen it run in some leagues in Greece. If you work on that oh, two or three days within a week, especially if you play a really good pick and roll team, with really good shooters spaced out and uh, you can see that it's going to work because most ball handlers are trying to hit the dive, the roller, or hit you know the, the skip pass or the pass back. So if you, if you force uh, this player to make the simple pass and they have to make another quick pass ahead, it's not, it's, they're not used to do that, most players in teams. So uh, this type of defense it's really, it's really good to, to know that there's a scheme different than any that. Uh, any defense that surprises the ball handler uh, is good, but I believe that next defense is not, you know, uh, the preferable, I guess, a high-skilled team, a high-skilled ball handler for more than, you know, one period of a game or for more, more than seven or eight pick-and-roll actions because you're going to read that and going to pass the ball quick ahead and then the next player is going to pass the ball quick ahead and you're going to have an open three or a close out attack. But it's a, it's a interesting type of defense to apply. We have, what are the options of defense when trapping in single tag side, weak side? What's the options of defense on trapping? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again because I need to draw 
quickly uh, something. Okay, let's say the ball handler is here and we have a pick and roll. Let's say this is the other players here. And let's say that they trap him on the middle. Like that. Okay, we have the single side and we have the double side here. Okay. If this is the case, and you have one player front and two players behind, if you trap them, you need to do this. The higher player is going to take the row. The player that left behind is going to be here, responsible for two players. And the guy that's further away is going to be here. It's going to lead us to this scenario. Okay. Of course, you have to you have a disadvantage. And on the fly of the pass, let's say he's making this pass, the, the easiest pass, okay, he's, the player guarding him is he's, 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 he's going to recover here. That's the easiest way to disrupt any ball circulation, and of course he's going to recover to his player. Of course he's going to stand if four tries to attack immediately from this area, he's, going to, he's, he's may, maybe going to stand him. And he's going to be further inside, because he's a weak side defender now. And you have to match up if he's trying to shield inside. Five of, against four, sometimes it's, it's not a mismatch. Sometimes it is, depending on the players. If that's the case, this is the proper rotation for me. If you're going to go with a different rotation, it's going to make the distances longer for defensive players. Okay, so it's really difficult to do something like that. Different. You can't, you can't have this guy here rotating that that far. It's not going to work. Or this guy here rotating and this going back. It's not going to work. You have to uh, to apply the shortest rotations possible for your defenders, if that's the case. Kostas, what's your favorite side pick and roll with the one and four? Excuse me, guys, if I butcher these names, like Spanu 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 Spanulis and Pridesis. That's uh, our top EuroLeague players. Our team with the empty with the empty corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, I understand the question. Okay, the empty corner. Uh, it's. Uh, I I think the coach it's say, it say says that because, let's say, let's say he's Spanulis and he's Pridesis. Five is here, three is here. We have an empty corner. Okay, and we said in the screen. Parenthesis is a, is a uh, power forward, really skilled with his back to the basket, but he can shoot the open 3 too. So the open corner means that maybe he's gonna dive, maybe he's gonna pop. So having both options is really difficult for defense to disrupt. Okay, especially if you have your big guy here. Okay, so if this is the case, and he's popping, they have to switch or they have to go push an under. Or else they're gonna end up with an open three. If he's gonna dive, this would be after they switch because he's gonna take his mismatch inside and then the ball is gonna hit here and they're gonna play low low. He's gonna be up here, he's gonna be up here, he's gonna recover on the wing and then they're gonna exploit the mismatch. Okay. So this action is really nice to do. We have a player that is skilled to do both, pop out and take the open shot, or play against a mismatch inside the post. And uh, they did that in the past a lot, these two players, because they're really skilled. They're both legends of the EuroLeague. Okay, and they did that a lot. Good. Last question for you. Could you tell us your thoughts on the rotation after a side pick and roll when the defense plays ice and the offense big picks and pops? Okay, that's a really good question. I'm gonna draw that. Okay, let's say the case is here and you have, you play ice, okay, you need the defense. Okay. All right. Get got a glitch. Okay, I'm gonna fix that. Okay, so this is the case. 
the guy is playing side, the big guy is here. Let's say it's a stretch four to make it easier. And this is the case here. Okay. So, and pick and pop. To make a pick and pop, you have to be spaced like that to give the room to the guy screening popping out to the middle because ice is not 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 always but usually ice defense uh, when coaches do that to cover you know the side of the floor some some do on the middle to to you know, force you to the your, your hand that's weaker or let's say a really good guard is really used to shoot off his left hand and he's they force him to his right so he's not shooting the ball really well from that so you have this spacing and if you play side and it's gonna pop okay most coaches will do that stunt fake and back help and recover and if the ball is passed here to this area to the pop out then this player should sprint as soon as he the ball hunter uh, point guard uh, pick up his dribble grabs the ball he's gonna sprint here until his teammate stuns him and then returns back and then they have a contested three or you know a close out that's the most preferable thing to do because you can't you can't switch here you can't have this guy switching and this guy switching is really really difficult to do that you have really long rotations to to cover and you can't do that because the quick pass you have an open three so you have to stunt and recover and this this guy gonna sprint as soon as he has the ball timing and uh, sprinting is the key here that's the only rotation you can do here in that situation because you're in side position you can't switch that you can't say to his guy go there because he's gonna leave all he's gonna leave his guy all alone so that's the rotation i could do i should do mm -hmm. great great job costas very thorough analytic presentation and great uh, diagramming and clip drawing for us to reference it and visualize it. it was, I thought it was really good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, th thank you for doing this again for us. Um, do you want to put your uh, contact information up real yeah. quick, yeah, or yeah. or type it in the chat if anybody wants to continue conversation with you? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna share the screen once again, and at the end of the video, have put my contact information. I believe so. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it. Okay, at the end, yeah. Ah, come on. I found it. Okay. Okay, that's my social media and my coach keep account. You can see. Ah, okay, I'm gonna do that one more time and leave, leave it here. Okay, I left it. Okay, you there can you follow go. me social media if you if you want. I share content. Uh, on a daily basis, clips and drawings. I have a CoSkip account. And uh, of course, uh, after the clinic, there will be an offer to all participants uh, about this advanced uh, pick and roll offense and defense course. Uh, what you have seen here today was only a portion, only a couple of actions and schemes that I have found and analyzed with ClipDraw. And I have a ton of other clips on this course. So if you're interested, hit me to to send you a discount uh, coupon or after the, the session they will be mailing to you the offer so thank you for participating any coach and uh, i'm really open to discuss anything any questions i have uh, on a weekly basis uh, coaches all over the world sending me questions about uh, my opinion on things and i always say to him i learn with you because uh, i've been in this profession for the last 70 80 years and I will be learning uh, until uh, I'm 80 years old. Uh, most uh, <laughs> legendary coaches say that. Uh, all legendary coaches have quoted that, that you teach, but you learn every day along with any other coach that you interact. And there's always new concepts, new ideas, and new uh, you know, ways to do things better. And the old, old clinics are, are really good to do that. Okay, I'm watching two clinics a day. I wish I could watch more. Okay, thank you, Coach, for moderating this uh, this clinic, and thank you all for participating. 
Thank you guys for attending. Uh, we're going to take a, a couple hour break and we have another, we have two more speakers for you guys this evening. Thanks for attending virtual coaches clinics. Hope to see you on, on more. We are planning to have these, I think now through the middle of June. So weekly Monday through Friday through the middle of June. So hope you're enjoying them and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks Costas. Thank you coach.